Hello, I'm Robert. I'm fact checking for Doomsday Debunked on Facebook and uh, helping people scare the various things. And this time it's about the uh, coronavirus from, uh, from China. And just to explain why it's really not something to be scared of. So uh, th this video from The Guardian but uh, I embedded in my uh, in my page because it's, it gives some of the main points. So that'd be a good one to have a listen to if you want to get over the main points. But anyway, so I'm just going to uh, talk talk about uh, some things that people got so scared of and they asked me questions about. And I've got so many PMs from it and then so many people. It's, if you go to the group today, then there's just one person after another, one, one uh, just loads and loads and loads of posts of people asking about this in one way or another, about the various rumours that are flying around and you know, is this true and is this true and is this true. So first of all, and most of them are false. So first of all, the disease is not very infectious. Uh, uh, it's so uninfectious that there's only one person-to-person -person transmission outside China, which was a Vietnamese man who had a family member who visited Wuhan and then came home and then it was transmitted to this other Vietnamese man. That is the only case of being transmitted to anyone else. So you get all these people who say to me, oh, I'm scared to go into Seattle because there was an American case in Seattle. Will I be safe in Seattle? And yes, it's extraordinarily unlikely unless you happen to be um, sharing the house when or, or got a family member who's just come back from Wuhan, in which case, you know, the, and, this, and this person is the one who is the case who was infected, who got the disease, and then in that case, they would have told you about it already. So, unless someone has actually come round to your door and said to you, you know, did you know that you, you were in very close contact with someone who has this disease, then you really don't need to think about this. Because it's, it's not it's not easily transmitted, and it's not it's not that serious either, for most people. At least ninety six percent recover, but that is the ones who present to hospital, and who or, or who are or or who they, nowadays they're going around and finding all the contacts, and they, and they are um, they recognise them as they they what do they do, you know when they test them and they find that they're positive for the virus. But uh, there may well be many, uh, uh, probably quite a few, that haven't been discovered yet. And you've got these, these 5,000 who, um, who of the... It, it could easily go up to 5,000. I, I mean, it could easily go up to over 1,000. And the uh, the last kind of modelling suggests there could be over 4,000 who have been infected and, and nothing much happened. So... Don't be surprised if the numbers infected goes up because that would just mean that they're being more, they're finding more and more of the people who've had, many of them maybe have no symptoms at all, hardly any symptoms. So the, so the way, and then you, some of you are scared by this, um, this, this fake story. So this is totally fake. I think all that they've done there, this is from The Sun, who is famous it's, a, it's famous for the story about Freddy Star eating a hamster and no hamsters were harmed in, the, in that story. Just totally made up. I think they just photoshopped in um, someone lying on the ground there. I suppose that person does look like they're leaning down to it. But uh, I just, of course, knows what that's about. And then this, and this one, just someone, someone else photoshopped in. It could, it could alternatively be actors. It certainly, uh, if it was real, it would be in other papers, not just in the Sun, which is famous for doing this sort of a thing. It's very sensationalist. So that is not how this disease progresses. It doesn't you don't suddenly fall in the street. So um, the the way uh, I, the way it, it works is that for about the first week or so, so they they uh, the Chinese have been very open in this. And for about the, uh, and they actually give detailed case uh, case histories, certainly of the first seventeen. So I've had a look at those, and 
for the first week then it's just uh, it typically then it, it's just it's like a normal it's like normal flu but then it gets worse and worse and, and this is for the, the few who don't recover and then they um, likely get pneumonia now when it says they get pneumonia then it means that they got inflammation inside their lungs and it doesn't mean that they had microbial pneumonia it's due to the virus and, uh, and then if you get over the virus you're over the pneumonia once it heals you're over it so uh, but many who get the virus they, they don't get this information but if, if you do and then then the worst cases then they end up um, difficulty breathing they're on ventilation they get oxygen and then eventually they die through um, uh, they, they, uh, many of them get organ failure right at the very end and then they die so that's a progression but you don't just die in the street it's just like flu you go to bed you're feeling rotten you're getting worse and then you get worse and worse and worse if you are one of the very unlucky ones but the ones who are unlucky like that are people who would probably also die of the flu so that helps you put it in perspective so if you are at risk of this then most likely you would also be at risk of dying of the flu and so of course you should take precautions to avoid getting the flu and that would include for instance and so the, it's the same precautions the main precautions of things you what you have to do is to be sure to wash your hands and uh, especially you've been out and you your, and your, your hand and you think there's possibility you've been infected and you touch surfaces which people could have touched or had the flu or had a cold then wash your hands before you so put your hands in your mouth or you know make a meal or something you know but go, go and wash your hands whenever you've been doing something something that could have been contaminated um, with the with this virus there isn't any risk some of you uh, as I said in the previous one but I'll say again that if you've um, bought anything from China then the these viruses uh, typically they d die within a, within a few hours so 24 hours is long enough and so if it's, if it's taken a day to get to you then you don't need to worry if you're feeling really if you want to you could wash it with soapy water but you really you've got nothing to worry about and if you if you've sort of been out if if, uh, if maybe you've got OCD and you get worried about germs then of course this is likely to affect you psychologically but uh, you just wash washing I mean for if you have a shower you completely got rid of any possibility of having it anymore on anywhere on your skin because it's um, killed with soapy water it's, it's, it's not it's not a persistent difficult thing to deal with but it's, it's, it's not expected. So now you get these people. I'll just talk about this thing about killing millions. So this story was in the Daily Mail. And the chap who said, oh, it's going to kill millions. So if you go down here, then this is a fictional pandemic. It was never meant as a prediction of any future disease. This is their statement about it. Be clear. The uh, Centre for Health Security in Parts did not make a prediction during our tabletop exercise. For the scenario, we modelled a fictional coronavirus pandemic, but explicitly stated it was not a prediction. And it, and it said it was all to do with uh, highlighting the preparedness and response challenges. So if they had a very severe pandemic, then they did this fictional, they fictionally invented the very worst kind of possibility. They actually uh, there in a fictional scenario it started amongst Brazilian pig farmers where the health services aren't that good and so you could imagine that if there was a coronavirus that was came from pigs or uh, and it, I, I don't know why it's got that coronavirus rather than flu like swine flu but they said coronavirus and they imagine it started in pigs and then they um, and then they imagine it's as, that it was as infectious as flu and that 10% died. So that's the worst, worst kind of scenario you could possibly imagine. Starting in a place where there's hardly any health health care, not very much health care, because the health care isn't that good in Brazil. And if you go to the, especially if you go to the kind of rural areas, 
And so they imagine it just spreading there for a while with nobody really noticing. And so that is not what happened in China. In China, the first case, according, I'm just going by the Chinese um, Wikipedia on the translate, translate uh, um, because the some of the sources on this particular point, some of the sources are in Chinese, and you know it, it wouldn't be easy to find the actual information and read it if you're not a Chinese speaker. So, so, so for some of the one or two of the details, I go by the Chinese Wikipedia, and they so anyway there they said that the uh, that it started on the first of December was the first case, but it wasn't recognised as being what it is until the thirtieth of December. And then after that, so that's a, quite a short run-up. For for I'm sort of not talking about their fictional scenario. I'm now talking about this this the Chinese virus. Then that was only a month before it was discovered. It was it was um, they got public statements and saying, look, we found what seems to be a new a new kind of disease. We don't know what it is. And then a week or so later, they uh, they actually sequenced it and then everybody knew about it. If you compare that with the last, with the SARS outbreak, then the Chinese didn't tell anyone that there was anything unusual for three months. And even after that, they didn't let on much about what was going on. And so it's no wonder that you've got quite a lot of people, I think mainly in Canada, for the SARS, what, SARS outbreak, um, before uh, anybody really knew what was going on. It's just so different. So it's also very different from this fictional scenario, where it it just it, it just is incubating and it's it's being spread amongst um, these these Brazilian um, pig farmers and they, and nobody's being tested, and then and then they imagine and they also imagined it's being much worse than this. Ten percent died, whereas I said this is only four percent, and then and then probably even less than that once they take into account of all the people who've just got little sniffles and not thought it was anything, and. Uh, and uh, which they you know, they miss gradually finding more and more of those, and once they've got more of those, imagine that might well go down below four percent, and then they imagine it being very infectious, like the flu, and this one is highly non-infectious, only one instance of all the people, so quite a few now, who who've um, cases outside the of people outside China, only one of them has be any infection to another person, um, the infection happening outside of China. So there's such a different situation. And the whole point about this wasn't predicting 65 million. The whole point about this was to say, let's see how our, how our measures we take are stressed and what we can do about it and how we can be ready to respond more promptly and what are our priorities. And based on that, your recommendations as to as to what to do, because preparing in advance makes a big difference. Anyway, in this case, although I'm, I'm not sure how many of those preparations have actually happened, but certainly uh, there have been a lot of prepared preparation in advance for this, and that is why they're responding so quickly, because they've worked on this in advance in what we do in this scenario. And uh, so it's not just come out and do it to an unprepared world. There's been a lot of preparation since SARS, and our technology, our medicine, is hugely advanced in the last decade, in more than a decade, 14, what is it, 2003, 17 years? I mean, back then, it was only a little while after they first sequenced the human genome. I'm not even sure if it was before, I think it was before then. You know, the first, it was a big, big project um, back then. When they, they they had they filled an entire you know entire laboratory with dozens of computers and lots and lots of machines, all in order to do just one sequence of a human genome, which a long long project took took them ages to do it, and now they have these little things that you can hold in your hand that'll do it for you. So that that was what the technology was like, like during the last epidemic of this type. So, uh, <clears throat> yes, there are lots of rumours about saying it was genetically engineered, it was meant to be used for biowarfare or something. Uh, <coughs> and they, they did it, for instance, by, by, by checking for these patents. And the people went and found these patents, and the patent for, um, there's a patent, 
before, but let's let's bring up one of the actual patents that's the slopes I meant to bring up as patent. This is a patent for um wait for it to come up. It's a patent for, for SARS. And oh, there we are, so that we can actually share that. That's a that's a presumably um, that, that that's showing the SARS and it's actually I think it's genetically sequenced as a patent for SARS. Now actually uh, this this will no longer be valid anymore because in 2013 the Supreme Court ruled that such patents are invalid. So this is not a valid patent actually that's being shared. I'm pretty sure it isn't anyway. Because it's a natural, it's not genetically modified, it's just a natural organism. Anyway, anyway, so this was not, so people are sharing these patents and saying, look, the US government has known about coronavirus for for many years and they and they're just hiding it and then I don't know what the, some conspiracy theory or other uh, no it's uh, corona this is coronavirus hasn't got a name it's just called N the N coronavirus N for new it's very provisional so people just think so people, so they just call it the Chinese coronavirus but coronavirus is the name for a whole class of things including SARS and MERS and uh, and it's um, so th these patents are not for the coronavirus, not the Chinese coronavirus. And where it actually came from is probably from a snake, but the snake got it from a bat. And the it's not too common probably for snakes to get a virus from a bat, but they were both being kept in a live market in Wuhan, where on one side they have the seafood and the other side they have wild animals and, and illegal trades as well behind the scenes there. So some of this wouldn't be legal. And the um and they have huge um they have they have lots of snakes and lots of bats and uh the the uh, Chinese people just go along there and because they eat much wider range of food than we do in the UK. As, as some Chinese, and it's considered a delicacy. Uh, these unusual foods in in China, and so someone um, and so there were lots of snakes there, and the snakes were um, it's snakes close to bats, and the snakes got the the virus from a bat, and they got modified in a bat, and so we don't know this for certain. We don't know. We I think they have a fair idea of which bat species it was. They don't know which snake species it was. I don't think it's certain which bat species it was. And the um but but it is a bat virus and that's for certain. And then it looks the other virus looks very likely the the things about it that make it seem like it's a, a virus from a snake. And then the uh, two of them together suggest that it, the reservoir was a snake rather than the bat. And so, uh, that's that's how, that's how it's not it's not germ it's not bio warfare it's just uh, just like with these other like SARS which came from bat via the civet, and this came from bats via the snake probably. It's it's got to be confirmed. It's quite difficult to check because they've they've sterilised the market now. But uh, I dare say soon they'll find out. That's our best bet at the moment. So. Yes, if you want to keep, I, I I recommend Wikipedia. Now I'm not, I'm not uh, keen on Wikipedia for many topics, for some topics uh, it's absolutely appalling. But on this, and for some it's it's me mediocre, some it's reasonable, some it's pretty decent, some it's excellent. On this particular topic, then it's pretty good. It's excellent, I would say. And then they've got the Chinese version as well. And from what I've seen, you know, I've checked up the things that the, the sites work. They've obviously got lots of when you've got lots of eyes on it, the Wikipedia works very well. When you've got an article with just one one editor and a few people come along from time to time, who do, who do wiki gnoming, then they can make it anything they like, and there's nobody there to object. So um, and some and some of the Wikipedia editors are very eccentric. So you have to watch out. The popular articles are generally pretty good. So now, what have I not covered? Um, yeah, so, unexpected convenience, where it came from, 
96% recover. Uh, yeah, I've got, I've got these headlines, so I'll just go through them. Uh, so I say, I do recommend you watch those videos. Uh, this, this one particularly, that'll probably put you uh, quite a bit at ease. It's a uh, you know, de decent, decent video, decent summary. Um, yeah, so at the, la the, the reports shows the um, the twenty on the twenty third they said number of critical condition and the number that under observation on the twenty fourth they didn't say, so the reports aren't always saying the same thing, so they they, they seem to put in more details sometimes, and um, this this one WHO and it's from the China, maybe China just don't tell them, just maybe China only tell them. The, um, some of the details sometimes so the so you know 23rd I mean I, I don't mean any deceptive way I mean just say you know it just seems that they don't put all the details in in every report so on the 23rd then they uh, they said that there were 95 in a critical con condition and so that has gone up to 41 it's hardly surprising and then the 5,000 under observation so again the number of infected rising above 1,000 is no surprise either um, now, so the main risk is that as it mutates, it could spread more easily. And there's one case of a symptomless coronavirus, and it's from a 10-year-old who had no symptoms before, who had no symptoms, I mean, symptomless, no symptoms, or a bit of a repetition in that sentence. So uh, there were uh, seven family members, and six were infected, and of those six, one was a 10-year-old with no symptoms, who just tested as a precaution. So that doesn't mean, though, that this 10-year-old was able to spread it to others. It doesn't necessarily follow that, they, that because they had it, that they were able to spread it. So we don't actually know if it can be spread without the symptoms of a cough or fever. Uh, so, but it does suggest that, so, so, so I mean, there's latency period when you, you've got it, you've, you've received it, but you, you, it hasn't actually don't do much in your body yet. Then there's a point in which you can actually detect it. And then there's, and there's a point in which you have the symptoms. <coughs> and it seems that you can detect it be, um, before you, before they have the symptoms. And then this leads to the question as to whether the uh, which be a few days after you were infected. And the um, and so this would be a question as to whether uh, at that point you actually infect anyone else before you actually got the symptoms. So that's not known, but they. And they, it does suggest that it'd be an idea to um, quarantine, make sure contacts can't infect other people, even when they're symptomless. Um, it's not uh, it's not too likely it becomes more deadly as it spreads. It tends to be the other way around. With SARS, I, I think it came became less deadly because it's uh, uh, they tend to adapt to their host when they've moved over onto a new host, and the, it's not in the interest of a virus to kill its host. Obviously, the ones that the ones that are killed. Then, um, well, it's uh, um, it's it's not so much. Of, I don't know if it's so much a factor, but it, uh, yes, I I don't know. Certainly, for SARS, it got it's got weaker. It depends on the disease, but um, so SARS, they they think it probably got a bit weaker as it got on. There's no reason. Certainly, there's no incentive for the disease to to become more deadly. Because um, it does, that's not not really helping anything, as far from if you take it from the evolutionary point of view of the disease. So anyway, um, so uh, I should I should have double checked that as to whether there's anyone what, what people are saying about this particular one. Uh, I'll double check up that after this if there's anything, anything more about that. But I, you know, I say the SARS, SARS, SARS certainly got. Um, I think if anything, it got less less deadly as it went on. So that seems the, uh, the you know, and, and and I say diseases don't have a, have a reason for becoming more deadly because it doesn't help them. Um, it's uh, so I say there. There is a viral disease. I think I should just rewrite, rewrite that slightly. I'd be a bit too definitive there. Anyway, the, so the, there is a, uh, but it's not, it's not likely. There is a, there is a viral disease already that kills thousands every year in the U.S. And I'm talking about the flu, 
with influenza. So as I said, if, if the flu started right now, it's a new disease and uh, with uh, quite difficult to get a vaccine. The vaccines against flu are, are not that effective. They're worth having because it reduces your chance of having a flu by a bit. But uh, so if you if you if flu was a new disease and we had it for the first time, it's a, it's really quite a bad disease. As if you consider in terms of these these because it's also very mutable, it's constantly changing. And it kills thousands every year. It's very infectious. It spreads very far. It's almost impossible to contain. So, if you imagine we had flu for the first time, then uh, then people would be panicking, and so nobody would want to leave their house because they'd be afraid of getting the flu. So, um, and you know, if you if you put if you were to describe flu as I just described, but not tell people it is flu. And say you know this is um, Z, or what is it? The uh, I can't remember what it's called Agent Z or it's Agent X. Can't remember Agent X. I think they call it or something for an unknown disease. So if you said Agent X is um, kills it, it kills thousands every year, and it's very mutable, and people have made vaccines, but they don't last for very, work very long because it almost be very quickly mutates, and it's uh, very infectious and spreads around, and it can be spread via contact by just touching something but someone who's flu has kind of coughed on. And then people would say, what an awful disease. You know, what are we going to do about this? And they'd be absolutely panicking. But because we're used to it, then we just say, oh, I mean, that's flu. Everybody knows about flu. And if you're, if you're rather elderly and or if you've got a compromised immune system, you've got to be a bit careful about not having the flu. I'm trying to try and make sure you'd you don't have a, you don't get a risk factor for it and uh, so this is this is at the moment is nothing like flu in terms of you know you you, you you should take precautions against the flu if you're elderly or get get your vac get your vaccine if you're offered one and uh, take precautions washing your hands when necessary and so on uh, and those same precautions will protect you against this. Uh, what else do I need to do? Oh yes, so so people wonder, you know, what is what? Oh, oh, this whole thing about symptomless transfer. So what are they going to do about it? Well, they, I say they've. Oh yes, I, I just want to say they have loads and loads of experience of dealing with pandemics, dealing with not epidemics, epidemics. And, I mean, how many of you know that 5,000 people died of, um, obviously mainly young children, because that's the main people affected by measles, were killed by measles in 2019 in the Congo. So, and this is cholera, cholera cases worldwide. And these, um, see, these are all places with cholera. And these little dots you can maybe see. And... Uh, if you again, if you go to the Congo, which is a bit of a hot spot for diseases, uh, we're further down. Where is it? Uh, oh, yes, there we are, Congo. So, in two thousand nineteen. They had 29,000 suspected cholera cases and 501 deaths. This was, um, so compare that with what's happening here. It's not likely to go up. It might, it might go up to uh, numbers like that. But <coughs> and who, who, how many people have heard of that? So, um, so cholera does kill quite a lot of people worldwide every year and uh, I know it affects um, travellers who visit those places but the, uh, of course the main difference between cholera and this one is that there's a vaccine against cholera and it's also a vaccine against um, measles um, but but these people don't get the vaccine by, by like we do in, uh, if, if, if you travel from somewhere else 
yeah, you'll be vaccinated. So, uh, but 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 the the point there was that WHO, the World Health Organization, they do have many epidemics every year, uh, a couple of hundred or so. That's not deaths, that's epidemics. And so they have a lot of experience in dealing with them and handling them. And these these are the things, that, these are them, their strategy for this one. So they have to interrupt transmission from person to person in China and uh, prevent export to other countries and territories. That has happened. And then from the ones that have happened, so they already, they, they, that's why they closed off the airports. This is why they have quarantined certain cities, a little bit controversially. And then they have to prevent further transmission from the exported cases. So that is, and then the way you do that is first of all rapid identification, diagnosis, management. So that's like you know, the way they're, that's why they're handing out these leaflets and doing the heat. They have these heat uh, infrared sensors that sense whether someone is hot and got a fever when they get off a plane. And, um, and then give them all leaflets and say, you know, uh, and then they, and then if they find an infection, they follow up all the contacts. And then special measures to protect health workers. So health workers get leaflets saying, you know, this is what you have to do. If you, if someone comes into your um, into your surgery and, and they say, oh, I've got a cold and a sniffle and I've just been to Wuhan, then, you know, you, there's certain things you'll do. you take take a lot of precautions. You'll isolate them and so on. And... Uh, Uh, you know, protect you and make sure you're not going to be infected by them, because they come um, not not kind of close, close work, and in China, that I think in this country too, you know, doing close up work, you probably have masks and 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 um, maybe, and, and I, I think yeah, in China they had these this full protection gear eventually, because um, the reason is not because it's not like Ebola, they're not worried, they, uh, well some, uh, some even. One one young t uh, doctor did die of it, so there's a risk of death, a small percentage risk, even for young people. You know, and I don't know if he was young, but he was a doctor. He can't have been uh, very elderly. Um, so, um, but um, but most people most people if they're young, they're just going to get over it. And um, the uh, yes. So you get a bit confused there. Um, so and the ways and raising and risk communication to the to the general public. So yeah, just summarizing that passage. That's what they're doing just now. If I've made any mistakes in this video, then please uh, let me know and do look in the comments. Uh, do look in the uh, comments and the description. And if the, if I have made any mistakes, then. I'll have a note there about it. Um, I've been trying to keep very, like I, I used to, in my first videos, I used to kind of ramble off on all sorts of things that I, that I hadn't really checked. And I, so I'm now being, uh, and then I thought afterwards, did I, was that right? Was my memory right about that? So I just, with that doctor, I went off on a, on a little ramble like that. I'm not, enti not entirely sure about the details there. Um, but, uh, so so anyway so so uh this is this is what they do they know how they know how to deal with these things and they've caught it early and the um china is being very open about it and we it, it's not it's not at this stage it's it's not it's not a big serious thing it's um for for most people and if you, know, if you you don't need to buy, if if uh, uh, if you have uh, if you if there's a, a risk and if you if you if you have if you stay in Japan and you've been in contact with the uh, chap who got it and was infected, then I'm sure that they have come around and talked to you about it, and so you have all the advices to what to do and so on. And if if you haven't, then really I mean you. You should you should be worrying about the flu. You don't need to worry about this. Not at this stage. And it's it's likely to be like SARS. And most seven hundred twenty seventy four was the number for SARS. 
So yeah, that, that's it. I'm sorry, sorry about that glitch. I'll, I'll just I'll look it up af afterwards. So should I? Should I just do a search? Um, Maybe it'll come up quite quickly. Dr. Buckhead, yes. Oh, he, he was quite old. No, is that right? Let's just check that. Well, that's New York Post, but it's not always that reliable. But Guardian, I mean, uh, reasonably enough. I mean, it I'm trying to find one of the. This is how. Um, this is how to check these stories. So you go and look at that. And you get all these scary things. Um, so I, I, I shall just do that, and I'll show you how I check something like that. So the Guardian is not too bad. It sometimes is a little bit. Um, yeah, doctor in Wuhan hospital dies as army medics flown in. He was 62, so he was quite elderly. Um, he died, uh, but you know, not not that old. I mean, to me, at 65, that seems kind of not that elderly, but. If you're young, it'll seem quite elderly. So he died after, um, what's that about? Is it linked to something? Let's see what that, no, I don't know what that was about. He died after treating patients in Wuhan. So, you, you, but you need to, so there we are. So now if I want to find out more about it, so this is the uh, Guardian, which is quite, it's, it's not, it's not like the Daily Express or the Daily Mail. Um, generally, the things they say uh, are about, um, for the most part, it's fact-based, but sometimes they, um, they like, especially on climate change, then they do say things that are incorrect, they, that haven't been properly checked and that are exaggerated. The BBC does that, New York Times does that, it's, it's impossible to find a paper that doesn't do that at the moment, sadly. But uh, generally, you know, for factual things like this, uh, uh, you know, they, they, uh, they're generally, not, not, you wouldn't expect them to get that wrong. Um, with the New York Post, this is much more likely to, to get things wrong. But again, it's not the sort of thing that is so hard to say quite why I'm saying that, but they, they don't they don't do fake obituaries. Even the even the uh, most sensationalist press ones don't do a fake obituary of say that someone Liang Wudong, 62, died after he was infected with Wuhan coronavirus. They they basically they they the sensationalist press are ha absolutely fine saying and you know, they say things like we're about to be hit by a planet and everyone's going to die, and they don't and. Uh, I don't know if the New York Post goes quite that far, the Daily Express do, but they wouldn't do a fake obituary, and basically that would be a fake obituary. So I don't think that that's invented. I, I, I don't think I need to go any further with that, but if I wanted to search, then what I'd do is I'd, I'd, I'd pick up some detail like that, and then I would look and try and find something that is more reliable than you're in the mirror, you wouldn't want to read that, read it, you know, and, and look down there. See, is there anyone there that looks reliable? There isn't anyone yet looking especially reliable. In fact, I come to think of it, on this particular thing, I would probably uh, go to Wikipedia because they would be likely to. So, so I haven't found a single one of the most reliable sources there. And that's, Wikipedia is a bit like that sometimes. No, I mean Google. It's a bit like that sometimes. I have a bookmark there. I can pop up if I go there. Anyway, I'm, I have this search factual, which is my factual, but it doesn't work too well sometimes, sadly. So, so, so I, anyway, I, I'm sure this is correct, that he was 62 year old, because they just wouldn't. So, uh, there we are, routers. Let's that say a doctor would be, so they're, they're okay. There we are, so Reuters, sorry. So they are, it's factual. So I have this, this search that I did, Google News. So when I'm stuck, now you go to 
you go to the, the search and you send everyone, it just it just the sensationalist ones there or the borderline, you know, ones like the Guardian is is not too bad, but it's not nearly as uh, the writers is far more likely to give it just straight. And um, so yeah, that's been it's just the writers, it's only one there in that list. So I have this this special uh, fact checking thing that I did where I, I just I, li I linked I linked it to I filtered it to um, the ones that are created by media bias fact checkers factual. And so there we go, writers. Um, and see about this doctor. And I go down to let search and I can search the page for doctor. Yeah, there we are. Straight one. So, this, so now you see it's much more factual than the people than got it. Gives all the details. Straight one. China Global Television Network reported on Saturday that a doctor who had been treating patients in Wuhan, 60-year-old Liang Budong, had died from the virus. So those are the facts, and all these other ones would be based on that. So the state one television has said that. And again, it's the sort of thing that the state one television, again, they wouldn't lie about that sort of a thing. So that, so, so there, yeah, a little, little bonus. I gave you a bit of an idea of how, how to do your own fact checking. I will add the link to this on my to this video description. So, so you don't need to tell me if I got that right because I've checked it, I fact checked it. Uh, so, one thousand three hundred infected, and uh, yes. So I'll finish there, and if you've got any questions, do say. And so, so I'll just do these, these, these final things that people do at the end of their videos. So do subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And do visit our Doom City Punk Facebook group. Um, if you are scared of these things, then you will find people there. You'll find people there who can help with fact checking and debunking. And you will find people there who are scared like yourself and can give you tips on how you deal with your fear. And you know, uh, so if you uh, many people have anxiety disorders, or um, perhaps even post-traumatic stress disorder from reading scary stories on the internet. So, and that, that if that's your situation, then you can go there, and you might well find people there who can help you, as well. Uh, the slight downside of it is that we do get lots and lots of scary stories every day, but then we quickly get debunks for them. So some people find that reassuring that they just get all these scary stories and then people debunking them and so that's kind of quite reassuring but it can get a bit much and then um, for people who are easily triggered so sometimes people just visit our group for a few days and then they then they um, they unsubscribe from it and then they may, might come back later and quite a lot of our debunkers are people who were originally scared who then um, went to the book our group and so it's it's getting a kind of bit of momentum now and we we have a fair few scientists and strong, you know, people, people working in astronomy and so on, Astron uh, amateur astronomers who can tell you a lot about about anything astronomical. And uh, but we we certainly welcome more. You know, more fa the more fact checkers, the better. And uh, just fact fact checking the things that scare people. That's our that's our mission really. So. And that's the end.